Hmm. Gonna need a bigger folder. Hello and welcome to the Battle and Barrow. And yes, uh, last year I showed you my DM folder, which is this here. Yeah, and it's expanded now and it's getting too big for this lever arch binder thing. It's just been burst out and I've got a load more I want to put into this and expand upon it. Um, so I'm going to use a bigger folder. Now, this isn't just a, this is a lever arch binder. So this isn't a video about me just taking some bits of paper out from one folder and putting it in another. No, um, it's a crafty type video. Um, yeah, it's red, it serves its purpose, but I'm all about the aesthetics on things, hence why I even use uh, pens and pencils that have quills on the end. So I'm going to try and make this look a bit more themed, a bit more keeping. I'm going to try and make it look like an old leather bound book. So that's what we're going to do with this folder. So uh, before we get on with the covering of this to make it look a bit better than this red, whatever this is, let's have a look at my updated DMs uh, folder. As I said, I've uh, covered this before. It's quite a bit bigger now. Hello. So as we're nautical uh, based, uh, kind of, we've got I've got a nautical terms here just to at the beginning. That's the first thing. Um, in my original folder, I had, um, oh, forgive fingers, my wife just changed the ink on my printer, and so I'm covered. I've stained myself. Great. Uh, in my original, I had, uh, I've changed the order of these tabs a little bit. So, originally we had the setting first, and then the adventure, but for me, I kind of know the setting pretty well. But the adventure is the main important thing. So in here, I have anything related to whatever adventures I'm running. So at the moment, I'm doing um, B6, uh, Vowed Society. So I have some conversion information here um i've took the murder investigation and written a just one sheet crib sheet of the clues i have a potential second adventure here that i can run for a group if uh, i need to sort of just have a separate group i've got something planned here this is actually a warhammer fantasy uh, roleplay adventure but easy enough to convert i did it at halloween with night of blood and then here I have this based on uh, Dungeon Craft, Professor DM, the Urban Adventure Generator. This is for the Thieves Guild. So I've got a little table here, and during the, every so often I'll get people to roll, and we are rolling up some adventures. And then it's just some handouts. This is way old now. I don't think I'm gonna, ever going to need that. And then going to the uh, setting section. Um, so I just have the Spot Toll Rules still here. Uh, some notes on my noble families in my game world uh, and I'm adding to even though I printed off um, stuff like that I have a name generator whilst Karamikos is sort of based on Eastern Europe I want to make it more well, Warhammer based German so I have this table here of sort of German sounding names and a thieves guild because we're in the, sort of in the underworld mainly so I've got some if I need to create a, a thief road character I can create one on the fly here um, if we travel somewhere where I wasn't planning to travel I need a tavern quickly I've got this here uh, if we go back to the islands I got the island character name here or a Randy name character here here is my our name generator I'm about to make some minor changes to this this all these will be available or are currently available for Patreon by the way all these tables here that I use uh, some I haven't put up yet but I will do have this meal generator this one isn't available when on this because this actually comes from something I downloaded from DMs Guild I just spliced on here just for paper saving and looking up they want loads of sheets so yeah and I've got some uh, stuff I got from DMs Guild some random events for a tavern these are sort of largely non-combat events uh, I then have this which is um, so we are uh, again some non combat or it could be combat some sort of encounters for a tavern just things I can spl uh, spruce up a session if I want to uh, then I have my information on the uh, Guild of Wizards and Sorcerers um, here. Uh, so what this is, this is just, I'm creating a Wizards Guild for characters and it's just information about it here. The island, remember their island? So I've got their island, this is my DM sheet, they've got their own and they fill in. And then some general maps at the back, including our map here. 
So this is the map we generated on a video. Um, I'm still going to actually possibly use this using some of your ideas you left in the comments. I've got to work on that. Next up, I have the price list. Is, uh, price list. This is what was in my old folder still. So this is just a list of prices. Uh, there are sort of different columns here for uh, different prices you pay, expect to pay in the city. Uh, town and village uh, and their, their availability as such and this is still only a guide price uh, a low uh, a rich adventurer is going to pay way more for an item than a poor peasant that's just how medieval a bartering system went you uh, there wasn't a fixed price as such things is what the trader was going to sell it for you i've just read some interesting information in the book about it so i'm utilizing that here is all the uh, magical items in the sort of core game and their price what page are in the uh, dm's guide and their rarity just so I can, if someone just decides they want to buy something i have a quick you know that's doesn't just because they want to buy it doesn't mean it's in the shop but if they did and i felt yeah that would be in the shop for whatever reason I can look at the price. I mean, obviously, more common things like plus one arrows and such. Uh, so that's that. That's price list. Then next, I have my monster encounters here. Uh, most of this is tables and encounters. This DM's guide. Uh, so I have monsters encounters. What I have here is um, I found this online and I've modified it to my needs. Um, so uh, average party level and then I roll a percentile dice to see if they're you know so if I'm roll, rolling up a monster encounter if it's going to be common monsters uncommon rare and very rare and sometimes even non-combat so I'm adjusting it here on the fly and then I use these tables to uh, see what area it is so I have at the moment I have urban sewers and patrolled wilderness worked out so if we're in an urban and we go to we've got a common roll here i then consult this table uncommon rare and very rare and here again it's percentile either uh, uh, d20 even um percentile i'll get it right in a minute and i look up the party average here so if you're my parties would fall into this column only thing they're going to really encounter is guards because everything else is going to be a bit beneath them really at that stage but as we go up into rarity of course uh, you can encounter uh, a werewolf or some were rats uh, if they're in the rare column so that's just the monster encounters i then have some city encounters so so again this thing i downloaded from um dm's guild these are again largely non Combat encounters that could lead to combat, and they're just sort of things in the city uh, that I can drop in at a notice if I want to spice up the uh, the game, the, uh, the session. I have likewise, I have town and wilderness again, say I've got from uh, the DMs Guild. So we have some town encounters, some wilderness encounters, and what have you. So again, just that I can drop in on a whim. That fly if they if I want to instead of a random monster random encounter I can do a non combat encounter likewise we're on to ocean encounters this was in the last DMs folder so it's just hazards and encounters we can uh, have here hazards coming from the uh, ghost assault marsh there's a lot of that in here so I'm inspired by that so we have on the at the sea so that's if you're on the boat if you're under the sea we have this and then we have different wandering monsters depending on where they are so this is surface level and down to about 250 foot and then 250 foot to 100 foot deep and really deep. and the deeper you go the, the worst you're going to enter encounter and then just some monster tables here so just uh, if it says um probably get uh, so if we get encounter a well i'd roll on this table to see what wild it is what jellyfish what you get the point if they encounter one dead what under they're going to encounter and just a reminder of for me just some underwater movement table because it's not the same uh, again likewise from dm's guild as earlier i've got some other sort of waterborne encounters here that we can i can use and drop in if i need to and then printed out bits from the pdf of goes to salt marsh so uh, this is quite handy i won't cover this this bits i like from go to salt marsh that i want to include in basically the appendix uh, at the end, Appendix A, and I think it's Appendix, 
Appendix B only because it was on the back of Appendix A, but largely Appendix A. Next up, so I've got an island. We've got island encounters. I covered this on my other DMs uh, folder video I did, but we have the island generator we're using to generate the, the, the island as seen earlier on in the map. Um, the way this works is if they were, we're coming back here, uh, where is their map? So if they are, let's say here on their map, uh, that, that is a jungle symbol for me, uh, and they're going off into a blank hex. I want to see what that hex is. I would consult this. So they're currently in the jungle. I'd roll a d12, and then that would tell them what the next square is. Now, uh, the curve is, most of it is going to be more jungle, but you can get grassland, swampland, and hills. And then if it's swamp, and then move into another hex, I then consult this one. Again, likewise, most of it's going to be swamp, or I can end up back in the jungle, uh, and what have you. Uh, with that, uh, that's just for this island here, that's how I want it, but here I have an island encounters uh, table. Um, I'm going to cover this in the last video, it's largely taken from X6 Quagmire, uh, inspired by it and based upon. So I have different island encounters, uh, what they got. So if they were, let's say they were in the jungle, again, using that square, and they have an encounter, I would then roll 1d6, and this would tell me what encounter they're gonna get. So then here, I have all the different encounters. So let's say we're in the jungle and they got a one, encounter five, I'd consult this, and they're gonna get a heat plague humid breeze blows across the land as sun beats down relentlessly the air is thick with moisture stifling heat heaviness make every action a major effort even breathing so there's some constitution saving throws they'd have to do or suffer some penalties and what have you uh, so that's that we also could end up with combat encounters and if they end up with combat encounters we then get to this section so here is the combat encounters so um Wandering monster area type. So uh, let's go to jungle. I roll a 1d8 to see what they're going to encounter. Let's say we've got four. They're going to encounter some sort of insect. So then here we have different tables again. So we have an animal table, animal herd table. So I'd look up where the insect table is, uh, which is here. Now I'll roll one uh, d12 and see what they're going to encounter. So let's say we got nine, and they're going to encounter some giant scorpions. So that's nice. And we have some mini adventures, one of which I uh, managed to run that's the first time I tried this out, which is the pirate cache. Uh, you may think back to season one of my waffle sessions and a pirate cache, and they managed to get in the graveyard, uh, and this is basically how I run that. Next up, we have the rules section. This is something I'm trying out. Uh, I haven't actually tried it out yet. I'm just working upon it. We had a roof chase scene recently, and one of the players went to target a body type, a body location, but that was not available in the rules. It's available in the rules of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, but not in D&D. So I'm just working on a little something here uh, for that. Um, br briefly, attack roll minus the targets at your attack roll minus the targets AC will get you to hit location. Now, most of the time, you're going to hit the body, uh, which does normal rules. Uh, the higher you get result, you go, you can get hit the arms, which is uh, that you then cause them normal damage plus disadvantage on attack rolls till the next long rest. Legs is normal damage, and they hit, suffer a five uh, foot speed reduction tool uh, until the next long rest. I'll have a reset there. Uh, and again, that's cumulative, so the more you hit them in the leg, the slower you're going to make them. Head 15 plant is damage times 4, so you could potentially uh, headshot someone. So we haven't tried it out yet, but I think that should work, should be interesting. I might have to adjust some of the results, because, so, you know, head is 15 plus. What are the chances you're ever going to get that? Who knows? Next up, some more, uh, most of this now in the rule section is stuff I've downloaded from DMs Guild. We have some medieval uh, firearms. I've made some adjustments already because we'd already designed on it. So I've got that. Some uh, disease and infection stuff. Uh, this actually sort of comes from this I downloaded, but this is something I've converted from Warhammer. Fancy roleplay. Uh, so what we have is diseases. 
uh, how you can contract them, how what you can, uh, how long they incubate for, and how long they will last, and what the symptoms are. Now the symptoms all are taken from here. So uh, and these symptoms have different treatments that will work uh, that you need to do, and what the effects are of the symptom because uh, the disease itself really doesn't it's just this is just fancy blur fluffy writing it's a bit of fluff to describe the disease and i've just effectively at the moment just got this one page of tests here so what this was this was uh, a disease from warhammer fantasy a disease from this here to see if I can convert this to my system and that works and a disease from the DM's Guild uh, DM's Guide that I converted to this system and it works it all does work lovely so the symptoms here govern it and so that's interesting somebody may be running that soon so yeah based on this I've got a few more that I want to convert here from this DM's Guild thing and there's a Plague Doctor sort of character type so I want to get Plague Doctors in uh, this is uh, again rules on medieval tournaments, so jousting, archery, and melee. Because I'm hoping to do that in the game soon, as been announced. Uh, captains and cannons. This will be what I'm using for the seafaring adventure. I might do a review on this because this was how PDF printouts should be done. A nice fancy one that you can read on your tablets and your phones, but also a printer-friendly one without all the background in. That was very well done. So you might do I might do a full video on this rule set. Very interesting, very straightforward really, but very deep as well, if that makes sense, and which is my kind of rule set. Middle Earth strategy battle game comes to mind where the rules are simple, but there's a lot of depth to them. So that's what this is uh, here. So we got this in here. Uh, that's the prices from the ships. Uh, then I have just some stuff on Lankmark back here that I was just using for flavour. Uh, my NPCs are next, and we're getting to pretty much to the end. So here's Rannick, who's in our game. Uh, he is Fawn, who later got retconned. Not retconned, because it happened before. Before, when I was working on the adventure, I had a character called Fawn. But then I took the character's backstory of... Uh, backstory of his stepbrother Ash and so Fawn become Ash so the stats are different I used Ash's stats uh, he uh, originally he was going to be a level 12 assassin so um, this character might be renamed and used in the future but yeah and then at the back I just got spare pockets so that is my DMs folder currently but as I said it's looking red and I like things being themed so let's get the change up done. The first thing I'm going to do is take strips of foam board uh, and just glue them, the width of the spine of my folder, and just glue them into place. This will represent the ends of old books when they were bound. Uh, this is just what where all the string was sort of tied up and wrapped around the, the end when it's covered up. So if you watch uh, book binding videos, you'll see what this is and look at old books. So I'm just going to do two at the top and two at the bottom and I'm just using hot glue to glue it in and I'm going to squidge it down and sort of round off the corners of the foam a bit with my fingers. Next I'm going to cover it, I want a sort of fake leather effect. Now this is paper that's used by Amazon in their packaging so I'm just going to recycle that and use that. So I'm just trying to work out the size of the book so I can roughly cut it out. Uh, what I have done as well is I have been spending a bit of time scrunching up this paper to make it you know, scrunchy. <laughs> Once I have sort of roughly measured out using the folder as a sort of a template, I'm going to come in with a sharp knife. I need to change that blade. Use a sharp knife, not what I'm doing here. I should have changed the blade. And yeah, I'm just going to come in and cut it out. Remember, don't do what Kev does. Next, I am going to coat one side of the folder in PVA glue, giving it a good, good coating. I'm also going to do uh, the spine at the same time. Push the folder down on one side of the paper, uh, close the folder up, and then wrap the paper around and squidge it into the spine and here I'm going to need to squidge it into those book binding foam bits I put on 
just so they uh, get some definition. This paper is very absorbent, so that glue is already beginning to soak through and come to the outside, but we'll do a bit more to that in a minute. Now, come in with uh, some glue on the front of the folder and repeat this process for the front. Once it's dried a little bit, don't have to worry about too much, just come in on the inside with some watered down glue and glue down the overhang. So you fold it over and hold it in place and cut it down a bit and you glue that in. Also with some watered down glue, pour it on all over the front and spread it around. This will re, uh, you have to wait for it to re-dry, but this is what's gonna make the paper go hard and make it look even more like old dried leather. Uh, and then when it's dry, it's just a case of painting it. I am using some raw sienna here. This is a light reddish brown, and I'm just gonna go all over and paint it. It looks very neat and clean, so this is where a homemade black wash will come in go in thick and heavy and then just dab it off leaving it in the darkest parts and just repeat this all over the folder okay next I want to have some gold bits on the corners of my book so I'm just working out some triangles that are the same as the folder and just coming out with some tabs working out some rough tabs um, that will fold, be bent scored and bent and wrapped around the folder once I've got this I can cut this out and use this as a template to make three more and I'll be having two on each corner front and back at this stage before you cut it out I am also lightly scoring down the around the triangle to make the folding of these flat flap tabs easier now I can come in and use them to fold around the folder. Now, what's easy is don't do a straight fold, but do a curved fold to allow for the thickness of the folder. So that score I did does help. But yeah, what I'm trying to do is do more of a sort of clip wrap around rather than a straight fold. Um, it would help if I did this on camera, but that's the problem when you are doing creative stuff and filming sometimes I need to look at what I'm doing and I don't realize I'm off camera but hopefully here you can see what I mean so it just wrapped around and uh, I can do one for the top and one for the bottom here before I glue them in place I just come in with some uh, bright gold by uh, coat arms and just give them a good heavy coating these are then glued into place using hot glue being quick to uh, put the glue in slide it in place again I am doing this off camera I apologize but uh, there we go slide it into place and hold the flaps down just for a few seconds just to let it until the glue sort of cools down and holds in place and do this to all four corners and when you are done you'll end up with something looking like this um, I've already damaged it a bit because I didn't allow for uh, these bits here. So when I closed it, it poked through, but I'm okay. I can live with that. I actually think this thing looks really rad. Highly pointless, um, highly, highly pointless thing to do, but I love going for a theme. Uh, I just think it looks like an old gnarly leather bound book full of ancient lore, well, in my case, bits I need to quickly look up in my D&D campaign so I don't have to flip through books. A lot of it is charts, random monster charts. If you're not doing random monsters, you're not doing D&D as a DM. Uh, a lot of this, yeah, it makes basically random encounters. I think the whole section here, random encounter, pretty much down to here is all random encounters about as we saw at the beginning so yeah but anyway you're not here to look inside we've already done that we're here to look outside i could in the future put something in here some sort of uh i don't know like the was it the what's the thing in never ending story the film never Ending story there anyway don't know what i could put something in there what would you put here <laughs> let me know in the comments what you'd put in there maybe i can do a mini follow-up video to this yeah so here it is, uh, if you've got time on your hands and you want to make your DM folder look a bit, a bit special, 
you can do this but that's it this is a quick and easy craft that you can do in an afternoon just uh, if you're bored and got nothing else to do thank you for watching thank you for supporting the channel uh, and what have you uh, until the next video guys stay safe take care bye bye and let me know what you'd put here